Hello F Sharp, how are you doing? This video is going to be a little different than what I have been doing historically. I'm trying out a new idea. I'm going to see if it resonates, if people find value out of it. But I've been wanting to be able to produce some content that's a little bit more casual than my education material, a place for me to kind of unpack some thoughts and ideas and kind of break down how I think about problems, but not tied to like code or some performance problem in particular. More of a thought for me to kind of get my thoughts out about what I've been thinking about F Sharp and performance and what's kind of going on in the field of computer science and engineering. Now, something that you should be aware of. So I don't, I don't consider myself a developer. That's a weird term. I do not have a degree in computer science. I've never actually taken a formal class in computer science. So I'm very much a, a taught by the internet kind of person between books, having fantastic mentors, Pluralsight, uh, Channel 9.msdn, all the videos on there. So a lot of this has been me just kind of learning as I go. And the reason for that is my background is actually chemical engineering and industrial engineering. And so for me, writing code is just a way to solve a problem. Um, there was a while I got really excited about functional programming and category theory and all that. But really, that was kind of um, a divergence for me. At the end of the day, I'm actually much more focused on writing high performance algorithms for scheduling optimization. And that's really what I focus on. I, my whole life is basically scheduling algorithms for warehouses and supply chains. And uh, that's what I love. To be able to do that, though, you have to be able to write really fast code. And F Sharp was a very easy language for me to do that in. And so what I wanted to unpack in this video is like, you know, why, why F Sharp? Why F Sharp for writing fast simulations and optimization? And the reason for that is I'm going to illustrate with this graph. And so on here, ho oh, ho, chunky lines. So on here, we have these two different axes. And on one, we have on this one, I'm going to put time. And on this one, I'm going to put performance. I'm going to just abbreviate it as perf. Now, on this chart, there is a theoretical perfect performing application. And what that application would be is like, hey, in theory, we could, if we took the time, we could find the optimal set of x86 instructions that would achieve the best possible time for our uh, simulation to run and give us the result. That theoretically exists. It is nigh impossible to find it. You could, in theory, do it for some small programs. And there's things like BLOSS and LawPack and LinPack, which are these linear algebra libraries that are like tuned by you know, decades of people focusing on those things. And you could possibly make an argument that those things are near perfection. But those are those are individual algorithms for working with matrices. Once you get to bespoke simulations, which is what I do, you you can't it is uh I don't want to use like super strong terms, but like it's essentially impossible for you to be able to invest the time to really prove that you've found the perfect performance uh, program. And what's this time axis about? So what this time axis is about is like the time to you actually achieve, you have like workable code, code that actually solves your problem, actually does what it is that you want it to do. And I would like possibly plot a few on here. So uh, let's be honest. If you did the default F sharp thing, right? I'm going to put F sharp right here. If you wrote idiomatic F sharp, the way like if you go and read their documentation, you take the classes, you read all the, the content that's out there about how to write F sharp code, and you would write a working simulation in a relatively short period of time. This is not very far out on the axes, but it would no, it would not be anywhere near the theoretical perfect performance of like the perfect uh, perfect program. 
Now, here's the thing though, there is worse. <laughs> there are dots below this and even to the left of this. One could argue that like, hey, you know, Python exists down here and I am not going to, you know, talk bad about Python. I actually don't like to talk bad about any language because I think those discussions aren't necessarily valuable because whether language is good or not entirely depends on the context it's being used in. Um, I'm not sure if I can think of a single language just like, no, that language is just stupid. Like even brain F, um, I'd rather not swear on this because uh, I don't want people to be concerned about their kids. Um, but like the joke languages, like even they have a purpose. They were meant to be funny. So the idea of like a language being bad or good, eh, not really, I don't know. I don't want to have those discussions. I don't really care. So there are even slower, potentially faster to develop languages. But what happens if you get too low here, there is a, what I call a, another horizontal line here, which is, let me see if I can draw this. And this is the actually useful. <laughs> and in my purse for simulation, right? Cause I'm very, I'm very focused on the area of simulation. Like if our simulation does not run in a useful amount of time, it might as well have not been written. And what I mean by that is like, if you're, if you are writing a simulation that is being used for the optimization of a scheduling of a warehouse or a supply chain, if it doesn't run fast enough for the people to get the feedback they need to make decisions, it's not a, not a useful program. So that's where this useful line is coming in. Like you got to get above this certain level of performance for your program to actually be useful. Now here's something and I'm not going to put one more dot on here. And then I want to discuss a little bit more. There's another dot on here, which you can make an argument. And that dot is C. C is kind of held up as the fastest language that language that is out there. Uh, the only things that, and, that, and that's because like you're, you're writing just above the level of the hardware. And I actually like C now when I first looked at C, like my, it didn't compete with my brain, but there's been like additions to C and there's like, Oh, like the language is still like, you could easily blow your foot off, but it, it doesn't, it's not nearly as scary as intimidating. Uh, and I've been actively working on learning it. So much, what you'll notice is it's much farther out on the time axes. It takes much longer. I would propose if there is a C uh, God developer out there, he's like, oh no, a C doesn't take any time. Okay, hats off to you. <laughs> but pra I, th I think for the most part, we could agree that writing something in raw C will likely take longer than writing an F sharp for like equally skilled developers, caveat, caveat, caveat. I know. But it's going to be way faster if you're writing good C code and you're really thinking about what you're doing. That's the whole point. Like the assumption is that you're thinking about what you're doing when you're writing C. So it takes more time to get something that actually works, but when you get it, it's going to be a heck of a lot closer to this theoretical perfect performance. Now, let me draw some other things on here. This is a dot. Well, in reality, what happens if you invested more time? So I'm putting more time in. And as I move farther in time, the performance I get out of F sharp is actually a, it's a curve or it's a line. It's, it's some shape, but it's like, these are not just points. Like in theory, hey, maybe Python could actually get uh, really good. I don't know. And it, it, reality is if you're getting not, uh, Python to go fast, you're probably actually using NumPy or some other library that's written in C and that's going fast. So yeah. And also here for C, you know, C probably also has a curve. Like if you invest more time, you get even closer and closer to this perfect program. So the reason I really like F sharp is because I get a really fast um, time to initial delivery. It's really fast for me to just like, Hey, I'm just going to slap some stuff together, get it up and running. And I'm putting something in front of the client saying like, Hey, does this kind of look like what it is that you want? Does this look good without much regard for performance? Although we could have a whole other discussion about designing for performance of mind and just like things that you know, you'll need to do, but it allows me to get something working quickly get something in front of the client that I'm working with and say, it's like, Hey, does this look reasonable? 
And then as the demands dictate, I can move along this curve. I can crank on this thing and make it go faster and faster and faster. Now, something I will readily admit, F sharp has a ceiling, right? There is the F sharp ceiling. This is a real, and I'm going to not even just say it's the, the F sharp ceiling. This is the .NET ceiling. Apologize to the handwriting, but like, this is the fastest that something based on .NET could go. Now, whether it sees above that line or below that line, I don't know. But like, that exists. And the reason I can say that is because as I've been more learning more C and what C developers do for performance and what they can do because of the language is like, yeah, you just, you cannot do that in .NET. It's just not a thing. And that's one of the things, reasons I talk about you know, having arena allocators and having, um, having static sized buffers and structs like it's these things that C developers are able to do to get some of their even crazier performance that is either extremely difficult in .NET or just straight up not possible. So I, I think we just need to be honest with ourselves like, yeah, there is a .NET performance ceiling. The question is, how big is this ceiling? How big is that gap? Is it 1%? Is it 10%? I don't know. What I do know though, is that you can get some crazy, you can get, you can get fantastic performance out of .NET. You can get perf fantastic performance out of F sharp in a relatively short amount of time. The facilities are there for doing it. And there's a lot you can crank down on by using things like spans. And then there's like the pinned object heap. If you're having to like pin on like, there's a lot of tools in your tool bag. And I would hazard to say, unless you need to get into this absolute upper echelon of performance, .NET is a fantastic way to go. F Sharp is a fantastic language for being able to get a solution out quickly and then being able to iterate on the performance. And so that's why I have really appreciated F Sharp for writing my simulation and optimization software is because I, I can play kind of fast and loose when I want to and just like, yeah, it's just a one-off script. I don't need to worry about it. But like the, the facilities are available for me to really crank on the performance if I want to. And now I, at the end of the day, you might still see tweets being like, hey, I'm still annoyed by this gap, right? I wish this gap didn't exist. <laughs> I, want, I want more things for us to be able to push us even farther. But at the same time, what you need, what you need to also embrace is like, hey, you can also just do a P invoke. Like .NET can call C code. Like that's a thing. So it's like knowing at what point, hey, you shouldn't add more to .NET. You shouldn't add more capabilities because you're now venturing into the realm of C. And C is great for what it does. There's a reason it's been around for a long time. And there's a reason lots of people still write C. And the reason like C is like, still one of the most loved languages out there um, because it's great for what it does. If that's what you want to do, it's perfect. Well, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's far from perfect, but it's, it's great if that's what it is that you want to do. So I hope this was helpful. I just have been kind of mulling this and like, hey, if someone asked me like why F sharp for this performance work, like why aren't you just writing C? I just want to have a place where I could point them, say like, hey, you know, this is where I kind of unpack some of my thoughts. So Thank you a lot for spending some time with me. Uh, I hope this was useful. Leave a comment on things you'd like me to discuss in the future. If there's anything you want me to unpack more or just kind of things that you just want me to discuss. This is really meant as a more casual thing. I will probably invite people on to have conversations in the future around F sharp and performance and just design type of stuff. So uh, thank you very much for spending some time with me. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.